Hey everybody, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you out there that do not know me, my name is Alicia, and I am a hospitality professional, and I branched off into the events industry, I mean, well, the events sector of the hospitality industry, not too long ago, only a few years ago. So it's been about, maybe about four years since I've been in the uh, events side of the industry. I first got my feet wet working professionally at a law firm as a meeting and catering coordinator before I currently landed my current position at a nationally accredited college in the special events and catering department as a supervisor. So, and I love creating, I love designing, I love decorating, I love everything about the events industry. That is why I am the go-to person amongst my family and friends for when they want to host something or need help with decorating. I am normally the go-to person that they come to um, and I give them tips and advice and suggestions on how to make them a memorable experience and then I just recently this year 2020 created our Bear Wedding Boutique which is a um, digital online business where I have digital products um, workbooks uh, courses tutorials all types of different resources and products that for those of you out there that are DIY wedding or event, um, engaged couples or individuals, maybe you're having a wedding or hosting your own baby shower or anniversary and you need advice because you just have no idea where to start, you need to stay with my community because I'm going to be producing more videos, more content for you all to um, be able to plan and design your upcoming wedding or an event. Planning and designing comes naturally to me where it does not come naturally to other people. And I just love the guest raving experience afterwards, just making everything look presentable and ensuring that everybody that attends the wedding or event that you're hosting, that they have a memorable experience because that's what it's all about. I'm a strong believer of make it worth people's time. Don't just invite people out and half step it go all out when you invite people out to anything that has your name attached to it i'm not saying go out and break the budget or do something extravagant where you can't really afford it do something within your budget learn how to make cheap look good and you know use those creative juices in your body to generate the uh, design or thing, whatever it is that you have going on in your brain, the vision that you have, you wanna be able to execute it and make it reality. So that is me, this is what I do, this is what I love. And again, I have a lot of workbooks. Uh, I have a podcast that I do Monday through Friday. So make sure that you check that out. The description and all that stuff will be down below in this video. Also, I have a blog, so I have a lot of resource and content for you all to uh, absorb and take the information in and apply the information. Again, I do this professionally um, at my nine to five job. Again, I'm a nationally accredited college. And for those of you that, I didn't know colleges had, you know, catering events and stuff like that. Oh yes, we do. Different, uh, different departments on the college campus, you know, hosts things for the students and um, or maybe they have like a, an event where outside guests come to the campus. So yes, catering, uh, events and college do go together. And also here's a little fun tip that you're going to learn. Colleges and universities are also wedding and event venues. So if you are looking to have like this unique experience and you don't want to go to a traditional wedding or event venue, definitely reach out to your local colleges and universities to see what kind of space they have because you never know what kind of space that they actually have. And historical colleges uh, that have been around for decades and years normally have a unique architectural design versus a newer, a newly built school, a college or university where it's more probably like a cookie cutter school, like, oh, okay, I've seen that design before, whereas these historical schools are more designed uniquely. They have different um, architectural designs and it is breathtaking and it will create a guest wowie experience, which you definitely want. And they also have different um, locations on their campus, whether it be inside of the school 
or on the school's property that will, you know, that they'll find or that they designate to use as for a wedding or event venue. So you never know what kind of unique gem lives at a historical college. So definitely, again, make sure that you reach out to your local college and go from there. But if you want a specific link to different colleges in your area because you're unfamiliar, I do have a vendors, I mean, I do have a venue vendors list and I'll also include that below. So that way you can get that link and type in the city near you or the city that you're in and get that link instantly download it to you after you purchase it and you'll be able to see all the unique places in your area that houses uh, weddings and events. So today's video is five tips to start planning your 2021 or 2022 wedding or event. So this video may be a little lengthy, but trust me, it will be informational. So as we all know, the global pandemic has really shut things down and the wedding, the events industry has been hit hard because this is where we make the most money is, you know, helping uh, couples, individuals with their weddings or events. And now we have to completely stop everything or we have to keep numbers extremely low. So the more people we have, the more money we make and, you know, the um because we're able to do per person and stuff like that so now that we have a limit we're either making we're definitely making less money we've been t temporary shut down or we've been permanently shut down and a lot of venues have been unfortunately shut permanently shut down so a lot of people that had those venues booked for 2020 are now either postponing or canceling the ones that cancel may consider post, you know, looking again next year in 2021, or they have just completely canceled altogether. Like, okay, this is done. But those that postpone their wedding or event are doing a couple things, finding a new venue. The venue that they already chose for 2020 has allowed them to move their date to 2021. And then you have new people in there trying to squeeze their, their event in as well. But if you are completely brand new and you don't know the competition out there for dates and venues and stuff like that, you definitely want to stay to the end of this video because you want to jot down these notes and stuff like that in different alternative places to wedding and event venues because there are other venues out there you just probably don't know about it you probably never thought about it you probably never even considered it so that's why i say stick to the end of this video absorb all the information in this video write down everything that you can and let's get started so again this is five tips to planning your 2021 slash 2022 wedding or event number one get a move on your plans if you already know that you're getting married, you already started the planning thing, but you have not looked into venues or uh, vendors, this is the time now to definitely do it. Don't wait, don't postpone because 2021 is already booking up from the people, again, that could not have their wedding or event in 2020 like planned. They now have moved it to 2021 or 2022. So COVID resulted in many gatherings being postponed or canceled. I just spoke about that. I have notes on the floor. Well, not on the floor, but in my little notebook. So I have some notes. I'll just be looking down if you are wondering what I'm looking at. So those that, again, decided to push it off already are, you know, they already secured a new venue or are looking for a new venue or the original venue allowed them to move to next year. So check out these alternative options. If you are stuck and you don't know or all the venues and locate all the venues in your area that you are considering or were considering are already booked for these years. So look into your local parks because you can transform our, all these places I'm about to mention, you are able to transform, but always speak with the venue um these places before you start putting stuff on their walls and uh doing hanging stuff from their ceilings always communicate with them to see what they will allow 
but I'm just giving you a general list of different alternative places that you can look outside of your wedding, your, your particular venue that you were considering. So you can look into your parks, your local parks of VFW, rental halls in your area, colleges and universities like I've spoken about before. Maybe you have a friend, or a friend or family member that has a nice backyard. Maybe you can see if you can use that, um, their backyard to house your wedding or event. And maybe if you can pay them a little bit of, you know, a little bit of money for, you know, this alternative move. See what, see what, uh, no harm in asking, pretty much. Look into your local farms, your wineries, um, community rooms. These are all places that you could definitely look into. Um, gyms, like a local uh, gym where they play like basketball at, they that serves as a purpose too for a venue. Um, there's a laundry list of people, so that's exactly why I say at the end of this video, click that link below to get the venues vendors list, so that way you can see all the places that the link that is inside of that vendors list that you're able to plug in and see what venues are in your area because you want this list, you want that link, that specific link. That's what you want. So that way you stop stressing. That way you're not as frustrated. You don't know where to look. Get that, purchase that vendors list with that venue just to get that those links inside of there and go from there. And also another place that a lot of people probably overlook or don't even think about are your local air your local Airbnbs or hotel banquet rooms. Those are also venues as well. Find your catering vendors. I'm not saying rush to do this because you still want to take the proper procedures and uh, get to know these vendors, especially like a caterer or a photographer. You want to get to build up the know, like and trust factor with them before you trust them to making your food, before you trust them to taking your pictures because this is all memorable stuff that your guests will remember if it is not done correctly, okay? If it is not done correctly or something, or if they could tell that it was rushed or something, if it, you know, you just randomly found this person and it shows in that person's work, then they're gonna be questioning you and now you're not gonna be um, the first option for the future when you have your next event, they're going to be like, oh, no, honey, no, no, and no. The last time I went to the event, the food was nasty. The photographer was awful. It was just bad. So now you have put um, a block on the future because they want to support you, but they can't so They can't get past that, that past memory. So do not, do not rush when it comes to picking your venue or vendors um so begin shopping you know write down a very detailed list of what you need and um how do you set these things in place like okay i need a kitchen for the caterer to i need to find a venue for the uh, caterer to be able to set up their stuff back there or maybe the caterer is going to stay and make the food there and send it out on plates or do like a buffet line. So I maybe I need to find a venue with a kitchen or maybe the the caterers are gonna bring the food already hot. So I don't really need a kitchen. Um, I need it handicap accessible. So these are all things that you really should be considering when finding a venue and vendors to see what you need and they need. Not what wants, not what that you want, what they want, but what are your needs? Number two. Have alternative plans. If you can't find a caterer or the one that you want is already booked or, you know, even uh, different vendors, look into, like, alternative options. Well, you have no other choice but to. But um, for caterers, if the one that you absolutely want that you know you've had their food before and they, they got a thumbs up in your book, but they're all booked, Try looking into your local restaurants to see what catering they offer. You've had their food before. Your guests have had their food before. You've seen them check in on social media at this particular restaurant. 
So go with places that people have already been to and they left, you know, positive reviews for, especially if you, you know, more than... Okay. So more than likely, um, your friends have already eaten at this restaurant. So pay attention to what they post when it comes to restaurants because people are still during this global pandemic still going out to eat so stick to so kind of pay attention to what they eat where they eat at how they like how did they, how did they like the food because they will make a review saying don't go there or you should try this place so that's what you definitely want to pay attention to where are your um guests eating at and then if other guests that you're inviting it seems intrigued by this restaurant then that should be a good to go oh uh, in your book to go out and try that restaurant but i would strongly advise that you try that restaurant prior to your uh, wedding or event just so you can uh taste it maybe you've never had it before or maybe you just want to narrow down some options off their menu so go back a couple different times before you make the uh executive decision to go with these uh that caterer that a uh, restaurant to make sure that the food is consistent. You want to have a consensus, a consistency with your food um, because that is definitely what people look for. People show up to weddings and events to see what's going on. You know, they're there to support, but they are also there to eat. They are also there to eat. They want to try something new. They want the food to be good. Some of them haven't even eaten all day because they wanted to make room for the food at your event. So definitely keep that in mind that your guests want good, great quality food. Um, if a big vendor is booked and has, you know, items out of stock, make the investment and purchase it when you can. And when I mean like big vendors, like maybe you're looking to rent something out, but that vendor has already have it, that item rented out to somebody already, or maybe they don't, they they don't have it in stock, or maybe they're not planning on getting back in stock. So make sure make that investment to just purchase whatever this item is before you say, ah, oh, I don't want to be stuck with the item. You don't have to be stuck with the item because there's a lot, a lot, a lot of places on the internet where you can resell in different marketplaces. And there's specific um, Facebook groups that cater to the events industry. Um, people looking to buy and sell different uh, stuff out of their inventory because they no longer use it or they just want to upgrade their inventory. So there is alternative options for that. So you will be able to recruit, recruit some back, some of your money back just by finding different Facebook groups or I don't think on Instagram they have like little groups like that, but I know for sure Facebook does have some groups that you can uh, buy and resell um different winning stuff or different items so that's also another place that you can look to if you really don't want to make that purchase is check out these little facebook groups that uh buy and resell stuff so that way you're able to cut the cost you're not really paying too much for the item that you really really want and you didn't you can always go back on that website on that in that group and resell it back um so that's definitely an option now if you chose a florist and the florist has fresh flowers or the flowers that you want are not in season and they, you know, won't have them in stock or again, the florist could be too expensive or too high. They seek other alternatives such as silk flowers, which mimic the real flowers. Um, check out your local grocery store and their florist department. Ask a family or a family or friend that has like a garden, if you and them could plant flowers, you know, plant the flowers and see if it, you know, blooms and um, do some research first before you move into planting and stuff like that. Make sure that the, that you're doing it correctly, that the flowers will actually bloom in time for your wedding or event and that, um, yeah, you just wanna make sure the timing is right for the flowers. Number three, number three, number three. Um, plan accordingly. A lot of your invited guests are still gonna be 
on the fence, even though it's next year, the year after that, to really come back around a group. Um, because uh, they, you know, still won't feel safe and, you know, people have their all theories and stuff like that. So plan accordingly and until people hear on the news or hear the higher up government people say we no longer have to wear a mask, they are going to be strictly on the fence, especially the, the, vern the vulnerable like the elderly people, the people with children and the people that have that get sick really easily, they will be on the fence and if they and the people that aren't like that but you know their parents or stuff are not even invited to the wedding, they may be a little on the fence because they don't want to be around all those people and then somebody gets sick or whatever and now they go back around their parents or whoever and they don't want to risk bringing any of those germs home. So people are still going to be on the fence until we no longer have to wear masks. So that's something that you definitely have to keep into consideration. Maybe plan for your original number, but also... So plan A should be your original number of guests. And plan B should be okay. Once I get the responses back, I see that only... A hundred people said that they were coming. So now let me move into, let me shift into plan B for a venue and stuff like that. You know, I've already secured the big venue to house my 200 to 250 guests. But they said there uh, if I, the, it, the, they'll say, they said that the deposit is refundable. So I can always get it back. So if that happens, you're able to do that. Just take that money and go find you a smaller venue. Um, or you can just generally plan for a smaller venue. And 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 then, because um, a lot of people are not going to just, I'm trying to tell you, a lot of people are just still on the fence about events and large gatherings. And again, like I said before, until they until we can go out back outside without a mask a lot of people are going to be home a lot of people are not going to move a lot of people will, will rather watch your wedding or event on a screen versus coming around other people so if you just want to move into plan b mode and just find like a medium-sized venue or a smaller venue go for it um and then if you then you can also give people that don't that don't feel comfortable coming the option to view it on live on some sort of live streaming platform like a private Facebook group, Instagram, YouTube or something like that. You know, give them an option to watch it virtually so that way they're still there. They can still see everything. They're still participating, but they're just not physically there. So if you just want to strictly go into a smaller venue, go for it. And then um, give people the same option as, of watching it at home. Um, oh, and then part of number three, keep reminding your guests to respond because this is very, very important. Um, Again, I would just personally find a medium sized to small venue, but keep reminding your guests um, before the actual RSVP date, when it's getting closer to the RSVP date and on the RSVP date, and then the day after, and that's it. You gave them four different options to respond. If they have not responded, then don't even consider them. Don't waste no more of your time. Don't consider them. And then if they say in the long run, oh, well, I, you know, I did get the invitation, but I just didn't have time to respond. It takes, trust me, it takes less than five minutes to make a phone call, to leave a voicemail, to say, to go in, on social media, because they're on there anyway, and somebody's DM on a comment section inside of the little, um, if you choose to do a, event on like Facebook, something like that. It takes less than five minutes to say, hey, I'm going. No, I'm sorry, I can't come. So 
you gave them four different options to respond and they did not respond in an accordingly manner. So you just automatically assumed that they were not going to be making it because without accurate numbers and just expecting guests to show up will be more money spent that you really didn't have to spend. Meaning you could have saved thousands of dollars with your wedding or event if you had an approximate or close or estimated number, but you should have accurate numbers if you, you know, kind of pressured people into responding. So that way you know how to move forward with the favors and central pieces and table rentals, table rentals, chair rentals, linen rentals for the tables and chairs. Um, food wise, because if you choose to do a plate, if you chose to do plate it, that's per person. So now you don't have to pay for those extra people just automatically off the bat because you're assuming. And then if you choose to do a buffet line, you're not paying that extra for the caterer because catering, they normally do a buffet line so people can have seconds. So if you give the caterer a certain number just off the bat because that's what you wrote down and you wasn't really getting the responses back so now you've paid the caterer more money than you had to and they made more food than they had to and now you have all these leftovers what are you going to do with the leftovers you have to throw them out because you're not going to either the guests that actually showed up either they're going to take the leftovers or you take some leftovers and there's still going to be a lot left over so and eventually will end up in the trash so that's why numbers are extremely 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 important when having a wedding or event because you need the more people that you invite is the more people that you have to feed the less people that you invite is more money in your budget more money for you and you can you know allocate the, that money elsewhere where it needs to be or maybe you want to go all out for another area of your wedding or event because you have your set number of guests that responded. They said they were coming and that's who you're paying for. That's who you're seating. That's who you have. They Now these people have a table to sit at. So, and now that, you know, each table needs a centerpiece. So it's a lot of factors that go into guest count that a lot of people really don't think about because it's just, oh, it's just the guests. I'll just set up the, the room for X amount of people. And if they come, they come. And then a majority of the people won't even come. So now you're left with a big open room with empty tables. You know, when I mean empty tables, I mean no people, no butts are in the seat because they're elsewhere. And now you didn't set up this whole room with linens, sashes, chair covers, centerpieces, plates at the table. So you didn't put all this work in for all these tables and only half of your room is filled. So that's why I say, numbers matter get a guest count if you seem like you're being pushy to somebody because you keep asking are you coming to my wedding or event that's your decision right then and there to make to make it for them are you if they're giving you a hard time about asking because people are like that for some reason like they don't like to be asked if you're attending their wedding or something because they don't understand the hard work that goes into it the cost that go into it and how your yes or no really does matter. So that's number three. And I also want to include number three. Don't stress out about this. You'll be faced with a lot of different stress, um, but try not to let it get to you. Family and friends might question, why are you still having your event? nobody's not going to show up they're going to you know you you are going to be faced with negative hurdles and i am not one of those people that's going to sugarcoat anything i'm going to tell you like it is people your family and friends who you have uh either have a close relationship or you don't have a close relationship and they find out that you're having like a wedding or event they are going to question especially during the global pandemic again until these masks are completely off People are going to be scared. So if they see that you're having a wedding or event, they are going to question, why are you still moving forward with this wedding or event if nobody's going to come? Why are you still wasting your money when you should just have a courthouse wedding and then just save your money for the reception? So it's going to be like a lot of different stuff, a lot of different negative comments thrown your way. Just bounce it off of you. 
tell them it's my wedding, it's my event, and I'm going to still move forward with it because I can. And this is my decision. You don't have to come if you don't feel safe. Point blank period. Nothing else after that. You don't have to explain to anybody your move. You don't have to explain to anybody that's not paying for anything why you're doing X, Y, and Z. Straight up. You don't have to do that. You can just tell them, this is my decision, this is my wishes, and this is what I want to do. And you don't have to get conversation with nobody. If they are trying to really uh, make you feel bad about having your wedding or event, just kind of brush them off. Or don't invite them at all. Don't tell them no more of your plans. Keep quiet. Keep your plans private until they are secured. Because people are going to try to mess with your head. Because they just want to A, be in a wedding. Um, and get invited to the wedding. Or they just really feel strongly about you having your wedding or event during this global pandemic, but you are not obligated to answer anybody's questions about something that they're invited to, and but they're not paying for. So that's all, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, number four, your budget. Keep your budget in mind. Uh, again, like I said before, kind of plan medium to small, not too large. Stay within your state's regulations. You can keep there updating it and, you know, just until things get really back to normal, just stay on top of that type of stuff. Um, like I said before, your budget, make sure that you're not overspending. I personally always say keep your wedding budget separate from your personal budget. Keep those things completely separate. But I'll do another video on that. So make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure that you uh, follow my podcast. So both those, well, obviously you can subscribe. You just hit the link. I mean, hit the little button. Um, but make sure that you check the description for my podcast where I have plenty of other topics that I talk about. And I give you the real deal, how it is and how it should be. The real deal advice, tips and inspiration, advice, step-by-step -step tutorials. I mean, not tutorials, but I go through different things. And then you could always check back my previous podcast that you missed before. Everything will be below. All you have to do is just, you know, click the link and scroll and see what topic I talked about. And just listen to it and jot down any notes that you may need or want. And go from there. It's going to be extremely informational just like this video is. So you won't be missing out on a thing. Um... And also with your budget, try to avoid saying wedding because like I said before in the beginning, the weddings industry has suffered and a lot of these vendors and venues are trying to recoup the money that they lost this year or they're trying to up their prices significantly because of all the money that they lost and all the business that they lost and they're trying to get back on track. Um, but either, even before this pandemic, you should never, ever, 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 ever say wedding to a venue or a vendor, because that's when they really going to hike the price up because they're, they're, uh, going to be charging you based upon your emotions, selling you these packages and these different, di and these different deals because they're okay. If I make it look like this, she'll be like, Ooh, and I'll, and, and, you know, and I sell them the story. That's how I get more money out of them. So really keep the word wedding out your mouth. Tell them that you're having a party. Tell them that you're having a gathering. They don't need to know what specific gathering, especially if you're DI, if it's a DIY wedding or event, you can decorate it yourself. So they don't even need to know what you're having the event for. Okay? Just say that you're having a gathering and you would like the prices for we're just going to say a hundred people. What is that? What is the price for a hundred people to get fed? You know, so that's how you have to do it. Just, you know, I'm having a, a gathering and that's that they don't need to know what type, type of gathering. You know, that's when they're going to try to upsell you packages and deals and all this crazy stuff. That's really not all that exquisite. Um, and even if it is, they probably still offer that same package to 
somebody that's having like a baby shower or a party or something like that it's just they up the price a little bit more because you're having a wedding um and last but not least number five one moment while i take a thumbnail okay i don't know if i did that i don't know um get insurance on your wedding your event your travel plans because again the hospitality industry has suffered significantly during this year people stop flying people stop traveling people stop going places people stop having stuff so this industry has really really suffered and we have lost billions of dollars this year alone um just from people staying home people not wanting to really be around crowds people not really traveling anywhere not going uh, to visit their family not going on vacation so attractions have lost a lot of money or shut down completely um businesses in this industry are really trying to hold it together and pull through because money is not really being spent in this industry people are still trying to survive a lot of people still are now working so they let the least of their problems is trying to go out go attend somebody's wedding or travel somewhere because they don't have money to do that so that's why it's um very important from the gate to also incorporate into your budget insurance so that way uh and find an insurance policy that um will work with you during a global pandemic or during a uh, natural disasters and um if you're not able to go or you know somebody gets sick that's attending or whatever case is really read the fine print and really see what insurance company provider works best with you and like the world what's going on so that's something that you definitely need to consider insurance make sure that you include that into your budget because that is definitely um important um i know from just doing some research some people had you know purchased wedding or event insurance before the pandemic and their wedding or event was this year so they was either able to get a refund a full refund what with the venue wouldn't give them back and what they lost from buying different stuff and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then there was um some insurance companies that wouldn't give them anything so you have to really do research and um see who would work best with you and for your budget and again keep your wedding budget separate from your personal budget um that is very 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 important to do so these are my five little tips i know this video was long like i said before these are my five little tips to start planning your 2021 2022 uh wedding or event if you need a wedding timeline i'll include that link below again go ahead and grab my wedding my wedding venues vendors list make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell for more helpful uh wedding and event tips advice and suggestions and tutorials and whatever about the wedding industry that i feel is useful to you i will be including that um and I'll talk about different topics in this wedding industry, different hurdles that you're definitely uh, going to or may face. Um, just different stuff to help you guys stay on track, to keep you motivated, keep you motivated, keep you standing strong and pushing through. Um, so go ahead and just subscribe, hit that notification bell, check my description box for all the goodies. And if you also need a place to shop and you have no idea where to even start with decorations and you don't know nothing about where to even buy stuff i have a link an affiliate link down below if you do hit that link i will earn a commission but hey it's informational in this place i have shopped at plenty of times before and i do rec highly recommend them so definitely check the description below subscribe like follow follow me all over social media land and until next time, and definitely make sure that you check out my previous podcast episodes and previous YouTube videos. And I can't wait to do another video with you.